Ready for cannonball? Cannonball! Cannonball! The waters of Costa Rica are rich with tiny organisms called plankton that are responsible for putting on this spectacular show. But there's another natural phenomenon that occurs here which is just as unbelievable, but not in a good way. No way, Brian, come out and look at this. It's like thousands of dead fish in the water. You have to see this. You can really smell it, and it's just as far as the eye can see. Waking up in a new backyard every time we move our floating home is one of my favorite things about living full-time on a sailboat. And since we've been in Costa Rica for the last few weeks, some of those backyards have been pretty spectacular. But today, we woke up to something we had never seen before in over a decade of sailing around the world. So there's like 10,000 dead fish all around. How disgusting is it? It's so bad. Like. You can really smell it, and it's just as far as the eye can see. And it's like created by the, by the red tide that is in Costa Rica right now. And from what we've heard, it's like the worst they've had in a long time. Like it's horrible. It's like, like hot, so hot today, no wind, so it's just so Are you gnarly. in a bad mood too, Sierra? They're starting to look pretty nasty, the fish too. Like a while back, like they look, you know, like they just died. Now they just kind of like start puffing up and like rotting. Red tides like this are caused by an overabundance of dinoflagellites, a type of single-celled plankton that have huge impacts, both good and bad, on their fellow ocean dwellers. Plankton are a main source of food for many fish species, and through the process of photosynthesis, they provide about half of the oxygen we breathe on planet Earth. But sometimes these tiny, free-floating organisms can replicate too quickly, and you get an algal bloom that discolors and releases toxins into the water. This can lead to some pretty deadly outcomes for a lot of animals. It can even have some nasty effects on humans too. But even blooms of algae that don't produce toxins can turn deadly for sea life. As the algae decomposes, oxygen levels in the water can drop to critical levels, causing animals to either leave the area or die. Red tides are a naturally occurring phenomenon, although the ever-increasing frequency of them over the years can be attributed at least in part to rising ocean temperatures and increased runoff from sewage, fertilizer, and other human activities. These blooms can last from a few days to a few weeks, and then, much like us, they stick around as long as the wind, ocean currents, and tides allow them to. Pelicans are probably loving it though. Yeah, I don't know how, for how long they can eat this fish though. Sierra, what do you think about that? She was holding one earlier. Yeah, they're all dead. I'm sorry, my love. You like to look at fish when they're alive. I got my first job right out of high school. I was a lineman for the phone company and I also got my first 401k. Since then, I've had a bunch of different jobs. I've lived in a ton of different places. And so I have financial assets quite literally everywhere. Before setting out on this trip, I created a will, but it was before I bought Delos, before I met Karen, and way before Sierra was born. So it's totally out of date. So I finally decided to update my will. The only problem, most of the time, I'm in the middle of nowhere and just popping in to see a lawyer really isn't an option. So I'm totally stoked for today's video to be sponsored by Wealth.com. 
a one-stop shop for keeping track of your assets and creating and updating your will. So Wealth.com made the process of creating high quality estate planning documents super easy. And it was a fraction of the cost that I paid my estate attorney the first time around. It's very cool because I was able to do everything online even gift one slightly used but very salty sailboat to the little nugget. It was incredibly customized to my unique circumstances, and every time I had a question, it seemed like the answer was just right there. And just like that, my will is now updated and securely stored in my digital vault. While I was in there, I even created an advanced healthcare directive, which means that my pirate-themed send-off should be a big hit. So if you're like me, and you've been putting this off for way too long, just head on over to wealth.com forward slash svdelos. It's super easy, uses bank level encryption and security, and will give you total peace of mind. Right now, special deal, 20% off for the Delos tribe. Thanks very much for watching, back to the show. But our day was just getting started, and in the middle of a hot and sweaty mass grave of thousands of swollen, rotting fish, it was time for me to get started on a boat project. After more than six years and tens of thousands of miles of hard ocean sailing, our electric furler on the mainsail finally bit the dust on our sail here from Quepos. I made a little mistake it's using the automatic furler to put it out and I went like past the point of that it was all the way unwound and it made a weird noise and now that sail won't go back in. So I needed to open it up and see if it could be fixed or if I needed to replace it completely. I can definitely hear the motor spinning. So we have power. Uh, the switch is working and the motor is spinning, which means there's a mechanical problem between the gearbox and the motor. So let's get this motor off of here. The motor turns a shaft that's attached to like a, like a worm gear, and then the worm gear turns a pinion gear that uh, makes a 90 degree angle, turns this, which then turns this, which furls the sail in. I, I suspect that this, this part is not even turning. So the problem is somewhere between this point and that point. Let's see. Ooh, that's the problem. Uh, that's the key for the motor and that's the shaft of the motor. So the, the motor, the shaft snapped. Although it has lasted six years. So yeah, this motor is screwed. Well so we gotta clean all this up, get all the grease off. Um, I did get that broken piece out. So this is the part that snapped off. Crazy, huh? I've got all these parts cleaned. I've decided not to paint it because painting is just, I just can't get into painting stuff today. Sounds pretty good, huh? Oh, she's spinning like a champ. You bite. Right. We call that a success. We'd had an amazing time in the sheltered, calm, and gorgeous part of Costa Rica. But with the hurricane season fast approaching, we needed to keep making miles north. So we decided to move Delos to another anchorage nearby that would be closer to the mouth of the Gulf so we could safely leave in the dark without having to dodge all the little islands that littered the coast here. And bonus, there is no red tide, so we could enjoy a nice swim before heading out towards our next destination. Ooh, look, Sierra, it's a rainbow. Do you see the rainbow? Whoa. Thunder's just pretty crazy. Lightning is everywhere. It's a pretty cool spot, huh? Yeah. It's been a great, great chill out zone here in the- It's been nice. The anchorages have been real good here but it's time to make a move. We're gonna head up the coast, um, I think about 50 or 60 miles, try and find a new spot, make some miles in the right direction, and- um, We're out of food. We're out of food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> out of food. We're so out of food. We have like a half a carrot, two onions. <laughs> we got a lot of beans, squeezy beans. Yeah, we got a lot of beans. Luckily. <laughs> but I can't just eat beans, like. 
You I can. Still, I, I don't know. Maybe you guys won't want to live with me anymore. <laughs> I feel like we're heading out into a thunderstorm fiesta. Yeah, we are. Zero point zero knots of wind. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go sailing. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, maybe there's some wind out there in the, <laughs> nope. the squall zones. Whee! So much bioluminescence, you can just... It's crazy yeah. here. We just threw a line overboard to test it. And it's... Whoa! Ah, so cool. I know. What, I else what else can we throw That's in the good. water? <laughs> okay, Brian peeing. <laughs> oh, now I have stage fright. <laughs> Oh, I need to make sure I don't get your wiener in there. <laughs> get it on! <laughs> oh! You can Is see that it! What you got? Oh, come cool. on! <laughs> oh, I need to drink more water, that's it. What? Oh, hold on. That was the tiniest little split. <laughs> <laughs> Brian! That's all I got. I didn't, ah. have, ah, I didn't have to pee already. Let me drink some water. Ready for cannonball? Cannonball! Cannonball! Woo! Oh my god! Oh my god! It looks so cool! Whoa! Whoa! That's pretty cool. Oh my god! Kaz's turn! Get in there, Kaz! Oh, look at that butt, though. There it goes. Oh, look at this! Whoa! Oh my gosh! <laughs> Whoa, look, Sierra! Oh, too funny, I have to pee really bad now. Look, <laughs> Sierra, the water is flowing! Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> How cool is that? Whoa! The water is flowing, Sierra! And then it just lights up with all the lightning, too. Like, so crazy. Woohoo! Okay, Jordan, you gotta get it. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna put the camera down and jump in! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Look at that! <laughs> Can you see it? <laughs> what's, what's that glowing light coming from? <laughs> it's insane! Whoa! Did you just fart? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you can see it? Yeah, I can see it. <coughs> Uno, dos, tres. Woo! Whoa. What? There she goes. <laughs> what do you think, Sierra Dutch? Whoa. And then all the lightning going. So crazy. I'm on the road again. All systems are go. Sierra's having fun. We got some hot chocolates. We gon' prove a day. Wait, out of the words got something, something. All the road again. Got a blasting. Uh, Four decimal, three knots of wind. Yeah. So, what's the plan? Ski just motor, and maybe we get some wind and see what yep, happens. That's it. And you're just out of the bay and hook a right. What would we do if we got hit by lightning? Like, what would be the course of action to take? I mean, if the lightning starts getting close, we have. Um, like a safe in the back that's uh, all metal. Oh. So we could put like a phone and a tablet and some backup devices in there. Yeah. Uh, that it would act as like a Faraday cage and it would uh, hopefully prevent it from being zapped. Other than that, usually all the electronics gets fried when a boat gets hit by lightning. People are generally okay. Uh, so it's not really like dangerous to life inside the boat. I wouldn't go up and like have my hand on the mast. If <laughs> You'd lose everything, right? Yeah. Well, let's hope that doesn't happen. Yeah, let's, let's all have to come to that. I think Sierra doesn't look too worried about it. Nice. She's, she's having a blast down there. Buenas noches, amigo. Oh, hi. It's a pretty typical night watch this evening. It's What's the structure? 
what does a typical night watch look like? Like what's what are the do's and don'ts? How does it all work? Do's? Do pay attention, do stay awake, don't put in headphones, don't fall overboard. Don't go out on deck without waking somebody up. That's the quick version. Yeah. Uh, we've been doing a lot more night sailing lately though, mostly because of Sierra. If we were to leave at six in the morning, which is sunrise, we'd get there at sunset and then we'd burn the entire day. But if we leave at like eight at night after dinner, we can arrive at eight in the morning and uh, you know, then Sierra sleeps the whole night, which means when she wakes up, then like we're ready at anchor and we can play and then we can just enjoy the day. We're set up pretty good. I got my cushions, everything. I got coffee, I got everything I need. Uh, autopilot right here, engine controls. I can monitor, uh, chart plotter is on, course is set. We've got the radar on so you know, we can see the islands, make sure they're lining up the charts depth, all the instruments. It's actually pretty chill, really. I enjoy it. It's not bad. What's your top night watch snack? Uh, two minute noodles. Noodles? <laughs> I do like to do two minute noodle with a little bit of uh, chopped up red onion, a uh, tiny bit of sriracha, and if I'm feeling crazy, maybe a little bit of sweet corn. Ooh, uh, but nice. we are out of two minute noodles and we are out of red onions, and so I don't know what I'm gonna do tonight. Like, You're gonna have to get I creative. Know. I can make popcorn. Just a few minutes away from each other. Better yet, she can transfer. Ah, uh, not a lot going on. Yeah. No winds. Yeah. Uh, no traffic. Okay. Motoring. No sails are up. Okay. Rock and rolling a little bit. Forty miles to go. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. We're just coming around this point here. I think there's a little bit of wind now, but it's like it's straight on the nose. It's like seven knots, but yeah, it's not much to sail. I'm listening to a pretty interesting book about toddlers and putting yourself kind of into the mind of a toddler and just how to think about different things and how to deal with different emotions they have and try to put yourself into their shoes which is quite interesting and I feel like I've learned some stuff tonight so that's good but I think Jordan is coming on pretty soon Good morning! How was your your watch. Eh, pretty uneventful. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit of motoring, a little yeah. bit of rolling. Yeah, about it. Nothing really has happened at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good news. Yeah. I got my coffee. Oh, nice. I'm ready. Cool. Well, ready we're just it? coming around this point here. Okay. And I do think it's wind just because we're at this point. Okay. Because I've been turning and just been following our nose like it's just right on the nose all the time so have a good watch i'll be here we just made the turn around the point and the wind angle is kind of okay to maybe at least put up the mains even if we don't go a lot faster with the main out can at least help a little bit for stability and with the rolling, so I think it's a good idea. It's very easy on Delos to put out the sails alone at night because you don't have to leave the cockpit. Everything is right at your fingertips.
Buenos dias. Buenos dias. It's pretty spectacular up here. Is it? I'm yeah. Up. It's real nice. Come on up. We got a blazing three knots of wind and killer sunrise. Oh, it's nice out here, huh? Yeah. The beauty after the squall. Let's see. There's evidence that it matters on the labor market. We have the point from reputation. This anchor is pretty cool, huh? Yeah, it's interesting. Really? It's like, you know, rocks and shit going on and then it looks beautiful. But it's a little like it's not that protected, so it's some waves and stuff. So I think you guys are just gonna paddleboard in. I have a bad headache, so I'm gonna try to lay down and Sounds good. get this in order. <laughs> yeah, get some snoozes, yeah. put on the AC if you're feeling sassy. Yeah. Okie dokie. See how graceful I can do. <laughs> You're taking off like a bat out of hell. Go play on loco, go play on loco. Me too? We all run together? Okay, everybody's gonna run. You ready? Everybody's gonna run. Get all the energy out. It's like walking the dog, you know? <laughs> gotta walk the child. Gotta walk the baby. Oh. Are you tired? Are you tired? Yeah. And go again. Yeah. Yeah. Hola. Is it okay if I say hi to the horses? Yeah. Hola. They're so cute. Hi. Hmm. Has she ever seen a horse before? <laughs> Not this close. Yeah. We made it into town to grab some groceries, which was great news because we definitely needed our strength to tackle the day we had ahead of us in this beautiful but insanely rough anchorage. So tune into next week's episode to see us roll our guts out as we continue our journey up the coast of Costa Rica. Whoa. Ah! <laughs> Need to clip in just to come out and film this shit. This is what it's <laughs> when you wake up in your house, it's I'm going all over the place with my surf break. I'm out. I'm out. Brian's out. Alright, so this one is gonna be a naughty and nice. Naughty or nice. Okay, naughty or nice. Here we go. We always seem to do naughty last. Okay, okay, yeah, let's do the nice one first. Nice one first, okay. <laughs> So people, if you don't want to hear the naughty one, you can like <laughs> skip that. Okay, so this one is from a YouTube comment from uh, Will Souls, and he says, Hi Della's crew, we met on the beach where your legs unfortunately got shredded. Uh, I remember that in, in Cuepos, yep. Yeah. Uh, it seemed like a gnarly anchorage. I was feeling for you all as you braved the waves to give Sierra her beach time. I'm sorry you all had such a rough time on your landing exit at Playa Bisalms. That said, it was magical and surreal having Esfidelos pull up to the beach. My family and I were lounging on and have you come ashore. I wish I had water shoes to give you all. Those rocks were sharp. Truth be told, I was so nervous meeting you all and I'm sure I came off that way. But again, uh -huh. it was the highlight of my entire trip. Happy birthday to Sierra. How can she be three? And fair winds as you make your way north. Are you planning to reconnect with Sailing Totem? You all are an inspiration. That's so cool. So I remember cool. him. I remember, yeah, yeah, he came out as we were like approaching the beach and he's like, I'm here with my family. Very and cool. they were super sweet. Yeah. yeah. That was a bit of a stressful beach yeah, time though. That was in, <laughs> yeah, one of the last videos where our legs got all cut up and the yeah. crashing trip. It was like a day of disasters, I yeah. think was the title. Um, and we're hoping to meet up with Sailing Totem there uh, in Puerto Penasco at the top of the Sea of Cortez. So yeah. when we sail up there, uh, we've been friends with Jamie and Bian uh, and their kids for, geez, I mean, they're from Seattle too, basically. So I met them the uh, first time in Australia yeah, and I, then... We crossed the South Pacific together, South, we hung out yeah. in Mexico together, so yeah. like friends for ages. Yeah. Definitely we're going to meet up with them, whatever it takes. <laughs> uh, all right, so you ready for the naughty one? Okay. Uh, Brace yourself. <laughs> oh 
Oh, do you have more than one? No, there's so many in here. No. <laughs> It's really fun to read through the comments oh, on uh, YouTube and leave a comment and keep us entertained, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got it. Okay. So this is a YouTube comment uh, from JB Automotive and Marine. And I think this is the video where after, it's the same video we were just talking about where like we had the disasters and we got water in the dinghy because yep. Plucky broke our step in the dinghy and ripped all the rivets out. And so then me and Jordan were up in the bow on passage uh, fixing the dinghy and yeah. he says I think I definitely enjoy letting her squeeze my rivet gun too <laughs> cheers y'all enjoy your videos tremendously <laughs> anyway that's it <laughs> hope you guys enjoy the video <laughs> love you bye bye one two three <laughs> <laughs> you guys do <laughs> yeah. I was expecting a little more squirted <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to do a spray like that. He's a really good mouth spray. <laughs> Maybe do some practice ones. Just like, <laughs> need more like force. <laughs> okay, you ready? Mm -hmm. Three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> but I also need to look like I'm puking. <laughs> Funny? Nice. <laughs> Coco has glasses on, huh? Uh.